You're listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Time, energy, and resources. Today's a call in interview, and I'm speaking with Christina. So, hey, welcome back. Today I'm speaking with Christina. She is somebody that uh, I have an interesting connection with because. We originally connected because she was looking for a coach, and after reading about her specific situation and the intensity of the situation she was in, I actually communicated back to her that I wouldn't recommend me. I wouldn't recommend a coach at all. I'd say, you know, you need to go talk to a licensed therapist about the current situation you're in first before you talk to someone like me. And she had written back to me and said I was the only person that offered that and everyone else said, sure, you can coach your way out of that. So we had a nice back and forth and uh, fast forward three or four months, I had just checked in on her periodically and we got talking and I thought she'd be a great person to talk to uh, with such a transition. She'd be such a great person to talk to on the show. So here she is. So today we have with us Christina. Christina, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hey, Mark. Well, thanks for having me. I'm Christina. Um, 31 years young, I'd like to say. Um, I'm from Chicago, the Northwest suburbs, and I have three beautiful daughters. Yes, girls. (laughs) Um, My oldest will be 13 and my youngest will be three. So they're pretty spanned out. And I also have a seven-year-old stepson as well. So that's a little bit of my history with that. (laughs) <laughs> okay and so that's that's a bit of a, a spread 13 to 3 yeah. so that certainly keeps you busy yeah if i may ask um how often are they with you all the time sometime 50 50 um as of right now 50 50 um I'm kind of on this journey of finding myself, so to speak. So um, right now I'm in Nashville with my father, who is a substance abuse therapist. And um, I'm here just trying to find myself a little bit um, by myself um, to better myself for my children and my family um, in Nashville. So I'm taking some time off and a little breather for myself to kind of adjust, if you will, because 2007 was a little rough for me, but um, things are looking up now and I'm feeling really, really good. So good to hear. Certainly good enough to, to chat with me. I yeah, really appreciate thank you. it. And you, you are, so you certainly have the challenge of yeah. traveling and boun- yeah. bouncing around. <laughs> and you said, that you were sort of finding yourself like a lot of people are. And I think a lot of people are finding themselves, but they just don't admit it the way that you just did in the first 20 seconds. So normally people I think are not sure. Even people who have been, you know, in the workforce for 20 years, they still aren't sure. I I run into a lot of people my age who say, yeah, I'm not sure what I want to be when I grow up. So I don't think that's necessarily such a terrible thing that you want to do that. I think that's actually a good thing. Well, it took me, it took me time to actually admit that, Um, you know, and it's not an easy thing to come out and admit for many people in many aspects in life with anything, you know, with career, with life in general, you know, even being a mom, any, anything, you know, Um, so I've learned to accept it for what it is. And that's all you can really do is move forward and look forward and shoot for the stars. And that's pretty much what I'm doing and the work that I'm putting in here. So, and it's paying off. Yeah. And, and as I said a few times, there isn't really a manual. I mean, there are a number of people who would love to sell you one, but I don't think there really There's not. is a manual. No. Yeah. There really isn't. A, because even if there was one, it, sometimes it doesn't really apply to you. You know, you may have specific challenges, which you have challenges. Other people have challenges. And, you know, sometimes um, the there might not be a chapter on that particular thing. And, you know, through the the miracle of the internet, it's kind of nice to be able to find other people who are in your boat. And that's why it's nice to talk to you today, because like I talk, when I talk to everyone, there's always somebody out there who says, you know what, that happened to me. And I'm really glad to listen. Right, to exactly. Voice. And you know, everybody's story is different. And I, I'm a huge advocate on not holding back, you know, making sure that you have somebody in your corner and, you know, a good solid support system is important too. And you're right, there is no manual on life. Like, there's nobody's perfect and I'm not sitting here claiming like I'm fixed or, you know, I'm still a work in progress myself, but 
being in Nashville with my Everyone dad, is. who is in the field and has the tools to kind of help me, you know, find the better version of myself and where I want to go career wise and, you know, uh, in many aspects of my life. Um, it's, it's just so important to make sure that you have those people in your corner and just, I've learned it's a lot of it is mental too. So, you know, you really got to stay focused and keep your eyes ahead and not look so much in the rear view mirror. So that's kind of what I'm gathering since I've been here. So, you know, I've been through a lot in my 31 years and I won't get into all that now, but, um, definitely have stories, but you know, it's never too late to make a, a positive change in your life. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. And that's really good to hear you say that because it is. And I think each person who's in that, that bottom of the, the, the bottom of the, uh, the crevice before they go up again, they, they think they're in the worst ever. And they sort of think that, you know, they're all alone doing it, but there are a lot of people who get into that same, that they scrape the bottom of that barrel. And sometimes it's amazing what happens when you do hit the bottom and you think, okay, I get it now. And the people that I've met, the nicest, kindest people I've met are the people who've gone through the worst stuff because they know where zero is on the scale. They're not on a six on a day and go, oh, I have a hangnail. I'm going to cry now. Exactly. You know, they realize, they realize what a real bad day is. Right. So when, you know, when they, when they get their pancakes in the morning and they got six instead of seven, they don't, they don't, they don't have a big problem with that. They say, well, oh, well, you know, so, um, I have a good friend who just, uh, just passed a year, uh, being cancer free. And I think she understands where zero is. And so she's not someone that's going to let a little tiny thing bother her and get to her. So I think, I think as horrible as some of those things we go through are, it's really kind of nice to know where zero is. And I, I think, you know, where zero is. And I think that's, that's enough to know is just that you, you know that because, you know, you certainly sound pretty cheery and you're not cheery because you trying to be cheery. You're cheery because you know how good and how bad things can be. And I really am in a positive place now. And and that's because, you know, it's, it wasn't easy. And, you know, there is, you, if if you go through tough times, you do got to put in the work, obviously to, you know, you got to go through the stuff to get to the other end, you know? And, um, I, I personally, for me, um, this isn't just for a podcast. This is, this is who I am. I've become now. And I've learned to let like the, my first emotion would always be anger. And I've learned to let that go. And I've learned, you know, such as I didn't get seven pancakes, my seven pancakes instead of the six, you know, I don't let the little stuff bother me anymore. Um, and that's something that is huge for me. And, you know, there's been a lot, a lot of growth and it's, it is, change is possible. And like, I said, it's just all, it's all mental, really. That's, it really is yeah. in such as putting smoking, well, you know, no. stuff like that. It's just all, it's all mental. And if I mean, you could do anything you put your mind to, it's kind of my motto and what I've been rolling with and it's working. So mm-hmm. well, I'm glad you're rolling <laughs> I'm with that. Right. <laughs> that's, good. That's, that's good. Yeah, no, no, that's good. And that's a really good grounding. You've given us a very good grounding and understanding of, of who you are. And now that we have that, let's, let's go ahead and talk about that whole time, energy and resources yeah. stuff that I don't shut up about. So let's, um, so your challenge, certainly time has come into play when it comes to you having to bounce around. And I would assume resources have certainly been foremost on your mind too, because it's not, it's not free to travel. You know, it's not free to do to, to, to end up in Nashville when you were in Chicago and, you know, taking care of three girls and, and all that. So um, what has been, would you say a big challenge for you of like out of time, energy and resources? Would you say what, what is it, is it that you don't have enough energy or you have finding the energy or is it finding some fun? Is it trying to balance things? What would, what would you say? Well, you know, since come embarking on this journey, so to speak, I guess it's balanced between, you know, working on myself and still being a mom from, you know, mm-hmm. being here. Um, that's kind of been my challenge. Uh, you know, we FaceTime a lot and things like that, but, um, you know, it's difficult, but like I said earlier, if I, if I'm not good for myself, I'm not going to benefit my, my daughters, you know? So, um, that's kind of been my challenge. Um, and then, you know, also with, with my, I want to call it my calling and I'm referring to your podcast from a, a couple of months ago that you did on jobs, careers, callings and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm glad you heard that. <laughs> I did. And, um, 
you know, I have a job lined up back when I, I'm going to be heading back to Chicago in about a little over a week and I'll be reunited with my girls, which I'm really excited about. Um, but you know, I do have a job lined up. I have a background in medical, which is phlebotomy, um, drawing blood, things like that. And I do have a, something set up for when I go home, but I do have a calling as well. And, you know, and that is to kind of help others and, write a book and, you know, I have all these dreams that I want to pursue and do, and I'm probably going off track right now, but (laughs) that's kind of where I stand right now with, with everything. So, you know, but, but the trickiest part for me, I think to answer your question would be finding the balance of working on myself and still being a mom, you know, it's a, it's challenging. And, and I know a lot of moms face this issue too. I mean, working moms and, you know, not necessarily in my situation, but I think it's a common issue all around, you know, trying to find that balance of being a mom and finding yourself and having time for yourself or fixing yourself or whatever that may be. So. Right. And, and I talked to a dad, uh, the last show who is in the, although it may air before this one, it may air after this one, so that might be confusing. But anyway, I talked to a gentleman who is in the same boat too. He has a little girl, and he's a stay-at-home dad, and so he's trying to find the balance between being a dad and also feeling the the pulling right. of the creativity of writing. And I think for you and anybody else who wants to write, my my biggest rule, which we got into a pretty good writing discussion last time, was you know just write every day, and that's what I do. And I think, you know. And as I was talking to someone else about this in that if you give yourself that license to write, it's you can finally do it instead of saying, you know, oh, I'm guilty and oh, I should go find another client or I should do this or I should do that. Well, sure, you always have to do those things. It's giving yourself the license and ability to say, yeah, but right yeah. now I'm going to do this, you know, and it's OK <laughs> because eventually I want to do a lot more of this. So when it comes right. to writing, I think it is like a muscle and you just have to do it every day and you have to stop feeling guilty and stop beating yourself up. So. And it's therapeutic the other too. Th- I mean, I, it really is. It's ex- yeah, it's extremely therapeutic. You're right. Yeah. So and when go ahead. when it comes to the oh, I'm sorry. When it comes to the other thing you were talking about, you really didn't go off on a tangent at all. You talked exactly what we're talking about because you were discussing the balance between having the time and the energy and how much energy you expend on your daughters versus how much you expend on yourself because you have a finite amount. And if you spend all your energy on them, as wonderful as that is, you then don't have a lot left for you because as I've said before in this, in the balance sheet that I have, you can have a lot of time, but then you, you plop yourself down on the couch or what have you. And you say, I'm, I can't do that. I just, I don't feel like it. You know, either emotionally you run out of gas and you just don't feel like it or you have no energy because you're just, you're just done. You've put in your day's worth of energy and now you're just sort of staring ahead. So it is not an easy thing to balance and it is something you do have to to be challenged with. And and especially you where you're sort of in this transition and uh, where you say, you know, I'm, I'm changing from this thing to this perspective. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, Oh, I wonder what step two is. You know, you, you have to, you have to every day actively go, okay, am I still going on this path? Am I going in the direction? What do I do today? How does this work now? Did I go far enough? You know, so I think that takes a lot of energy right. and, and focus. And it does. And well. it's, you know, it's a day at a time, you know, it's, it's not a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, it's literally a day at a time. And I just kind of set my mind when I wake up every morning with the same mentality of I'm going to move forward and work for my common goal or the, the goal that I've had for, since I've been here of, you know, going after my dreams, you know, of wanting to help others, writing a book, and then also bettering myself um, for my children. So, you know, that is a mindset that I have and uh, I intend to keep. And if you keep on that path, and some people even need a minute at a time, you know, not even a day at a time, and that's fine, you know. Um, but for me, I just take it day by day. And, mm-hmm. and so far, it's 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 changed me in ways that I can't explain over the past month. So it's been awesome. Right. So in that, so in that past month or two, or let's say, let's say you compare where you are right now to where you were, let's say three months ago. And I don't know if that's far enough back or too far back, but just if you go far enough back where you feel a contrast 
and you feel a difference. What would you say has changed the most as far as the way that you approach? Let, let's pick energy. What, what has changed the most as far as the way you approach how you have energy during the day? You know, how you get your recharge and how you know not to overdo it. Well, back, I was in a, I was in a, you know, three months ago, it was, it was, it was hard. You know, I went through a separation with my husband and, um, you know, I was in a dark place. So I kind of just emotionally and physically just shut down. Um, so, you know, getting myself, I don't know what it, you know, it just one day, just something clicked and I just knew that I didn't want to feel that way anymore. And, um, so I decided to, proactively make changes and reached out to my dad because he had the resources. And I'm like, you know, look, you know, I'm, I don't want to be this person. This is not who I am. Um, I'm just going through a rough phase in my life. And, you know, can I come there and kind of try to get a new perspective on things? And when I, and, go uh, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I don't think you were going to tell us so then, and then today, then how is today different? And now, you know, um, I participate in therapy, you know, therapy, I think anybody can benefit from therapy. I think everybody could, to be honest. (laughs) Um, But, you know, um, therapy has definitely helped a lot in my situation. I'm talking about it, you know, not holding things in. That's that's where you become your own worst enemy. Um, That's where you have these dark thoughts. That's where you don't want to get out of bed. That's when you don't want to get off the couch. Once you eliminate those things, and you make positive changes in your life and you have positive energy around you and you think positively, your whole outcome on life will change. Um, I know this sounds silly, but even now I wake up, it's like colors are brighter. <laughs> like things are, I can't explain it, but just just being here this short time and putting in the work that I have to do every day. You know, I read a lot, I write, I, you know, that kind of changed for me putting in the work that was necessary um, to get where, how I feel and where I'm going and where I'm going to go. Am I fixed? No. Um, am I still flawed? Absolutely. There's no such thing as perfection, but it's a work in progress. And um, so far it's, it's paying off and I'm extremely grateful. So. And if we compare what you just said, that it sounds, you know, it, it's almost hard to imagine these things that you're doing now that you'd be doing three months ago. Absolutely. Months I would ago. never in a million years, three months ago, think I'd be where I'm at today. Right. And you wouldn't wake up and say, hey, I'm going to write something. No. So it's very interesting because that amount of energy went into just sort of supporting your right. sanity and, and just sort of getting through the day. And now that's not your priority anymore because that's sort of a given. So now it's extra energy that you would have spent on just status quo. You can say, well, what do I do now? I want to do, I want to do something that makes me happy. And now you're putting it into things that you, that that can make you happy. Exactly. And, And it's so important. You know, I can't stress it enough that if you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of anybody else. That is rule of thumb for me. And that's something that I've learned along this journey that I've been in Nashville for the past month. And, um, that's just, I, 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 anybody that's going through anything in their life, you know, take a break, take a breather. You don't have to necessarily fly anywhere or go anywhere like I did. Um, but you know, just kind of take a step back and maybe, like I said, have that support system, have a, you know, maybe go to therapy, maybe talk to a friend, you know, don't internalize all of that negative energy because then you're not going to have anything productive to do with yourself. Um, right. And go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, please. Go no. Ahead. So when you internalize all that, it's just, it's, it's ugly, you know, and it, and it makes you feel ugly in the inside and it makes you not want to do the things that you used to find pleasure in doing such as taking the kids to the park or, or, you know, watching your t- favorite TV show. I, I was a binge watching TV, a holic. I had favorite shows and I literally stopped everything that I loved. Like I just, and you don't ever want to get to that place. And if I internalized everything, so that was my issue. Um, when I learned to open up and finally let everything out on the table, I found a sense of freedom in that. And, um, now I find myself having more energy where I want to get out of bed. And I find myself in a routine where I'm up at eight o'clock in, in the morning, every morning and going to bed by 11 at night. And I'm not up at 4 AM and, you know, it's like I said, I, I can't say it enough. It's all mental. So it's right. Exactly. 
So would you would you say then? And, and I don't want to make this about me at all. So just please, just give me a brief answer to this, because. Uh, but would you say then, once you get to that place, and I think you and I have talked a little bit about the the negatives and then the zero and the positives. When you get to the positives, um, do you see the value of of like working with a person like me? And, and being able to kind of lay things out and say, okay, I do have this extra energy. I am able to do this. You know, I want to, I want to pursue this thing. Do you, do you see that as kind of a cool thing? Oh my gosh. And I, I actually, I, I, I'm a firm believer on having maybe a lot, or not maybe, but having in, well, in my case, a life coach, because, um, you know, you could do the therapy and the therapists are the professionals and, and dealing with all that, but having a life coach to help you map out where you want to be career wise and, and things like that. I think that's also part of the process. And I think that it's something, it's a great, great idea and a great thing to look into. Um, if you're not familiar with what a life coach is, which I'm sure most of your listeners are aware. Um, but absolutely. I, I, I'm a huge advocate on that and I, it's a huge benefit. Okay. Okay, and there was no wrong answer. So yeah, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to prompt you to push you in one direction or another. I truly wanted to know oh, yeah. your raw answer. To that. But, answer. but, but <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good to hear. Cool. Well, cool. I I don't want to take any more of your time. So um, I normally have people plug something, but you and I pre-talked about this that you really don't have anything that you're plugging because you're sort of a, a private, a private person with a with a regular job. So. Uh, I, I, if I could plug one thing, I would just I would just plug people to just you know to to be themselves and to just to not hold back and to you know if you feel you need something or help then really try to go and and get that. That's the only thing that I would plug. And I think I think that's excellent advice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. If you feel you're in the place, seeing a licensed. Uh, professional is important. If you feel like you're the other side of zero where you're a two or a three and you want to be a five, then seeing somebody like me makes sense. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Well, thank you for sort of plugging me to plug yourself. That's, I appreciate that. So, <laughs> yeah, go see so, Mark. <laughs> yeah. well, well, okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you again and want to wish you well. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate your time. So, Christine has gone through some difficult times. And her perception and understanding of things has changed quite a bit because she has opened her eyes to a lot of things that she may not have been seeing before. When guests speak, other than trying to gently keep them on topic, I don't like to guide them in any way. I like to have them discuss what comes to mind. Afterwards, I like to break down what they've discussed and see how it applies to things that I've already written and podcasted about. And in this case, she did such a beautiful job. There are so many points that she made that you can read more about in the podcast and articles. So check out the mini article that comes along with the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast on your phone, you'll see the text there. If you're seeing it in your browser, you'll see the text there. And if you're reading the article on the AFL site, You'll see all the links in the text there. Hey, it's Mark. Thanks for listening. To keep up on everything from AFL, go to alchemy4.life. You can also like us on Facebook, follow on Twitter, subscribe to these podcasts, and all that good stuff. Hopefully it was tangible. I try to make everything that way. And I will see you next time.